So as you can see, the um, the top is pretty much on and done. Uh, there's a few little touch-ups I need to do. Um, you know, just a few little few little things to mess with, but it's pretty much done. And I know I didn't really show you much of the final steps here, but um, this is actually my second take of this video. The first one was well over an hour, and it was an hour of me doing it wrong, trying to fix it, it still being wrong, trying to fix it, redoing it, trying to fix it, and went back and watched it over, and it was just, it, it was pointless. Too long, too boring, too pointless, not showing anything good. And, um, because this is really not easy, and it's still, it's not perfect right now. Um, it's, uh, it's definitely, definitely acceptable. Um, it's, uh, but again, it's not, it's not as perfect as I was hoping it to be, but I think it's better than it could have been. So for this video, uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over what I did, um, explain from what I've learned how it should be done, how it should have been done in the first place, and um, hopefully... If you're doing the same thing, if you kind of take what I've learned, um, hopefully you'll have a little bit better luck than I did. Uh, so first off, before you start fitting this, there's a couple of things you need to do to kind of prep and get ready for it. Um, the first mistake that I made was in the previous video when I just kind of draped it over loosely and marked out the edges here and marked out the door openings. Yeah, I shouldn't have done it like that. Um, and also one of the first mistakes I made was just kind of clamping this on loosely and using that. Um, this needs to be on permanently. So before you start fitting this, you need a reference point. You need a reference frame for where that should line up at the front. Um, so this has to go on for good which means the dash has to go on for good and the windshield needs to go in. Now, doing all of this was fairly straightforward. Um, the dash instrument panel that just pushes in and gets glued in from the backside. The um, metal frame here, I just that goes on. You got the two posts that go in with nuts on the inside and two screws here. I would put the, well, I put the post in loosely uh, because those two screw holes did not line up at all. I really had to pry and get those screw holes lined up. So I also highly recommend that when you're fitting this piece, you tape off this. Um, actually have the tape go under the piece, not, not where the screw holes are because um, you'll have to pull the tape out later. But when you're tweaking this and moving this around, you don't want that edge scratching up the paint when you're trying to fit it. Because uh, it is really tight. At least on mine it was. Yours might fit perfectly fine. I'm, I'm sure every poacher model is going to be slightly different as far as the way things fit. But I really had to tweak and pry mine around to get it to fit right. Um, also, the windshield panel did not fit between the gap left between the metal frame and the, the dashboard. So the bottom edge of that windshield panel, I had to um, thin down. I had to shave the inside edge down, kind of like it to a taper. So when I put that in, that tapered edge went into the panel. Um, obviously not high enough to be visible, uh, but low enough to where it could get started into the gap and then get pushed in. Um, so, you know, if the metal tab's bent up, uh, you get all that in, then you slide the windshield panel in, then the metal tab's down, and then that part's done. I mean, it's progress, you know, that, that, that part of it's done. So now you have a good solid reference point for attaching the front edge of the, um, or for resting the front edge of your uh, the top. You'll also notice that I made a metal piece instead of using this. I'll talk about that later. I'll get back to that later. So again, first step, fit the windshield permanently. Um, also, the plastic pieces that go, <clears throat> excuse me, right here. Those plastic pieces right here. Um, on mine, they did not come down all the way this way. 
So when I put the door piece in, it was not following the curve of the door. I know I've got a few little wrinkles, they'll, they'll work out. Um, it was not following the curve of the door. So I had to trim in here. I don't know if we can get a good view of that. I had to trim this area around here so this would come down and match the curve of the window. Um, I didn't even notice that the first time I started fitting all that together. Uh, next thing. So obviously for that, you have to take the door piece, piece, the door piece with the window rolled up and temporarily fit that in place to get those to fit that properly. All right, uh, next thing you need to do. This plastic piece right here, that plastic piece that clamps the fabric between the uh, car body and that piece that all the screws go through, uh, that piece you'll need to trim a little bit um, because, hmm, uh, let me get a, um, well, this will work. Let me just kind of set this off to the side for now. So let's say this is the car body and there's a little bit of a lip and this is where the fabric, uh, the fabric goes here and loops around. That plastic piece sits in here like this and then screws go through to clamp the fabric between it. Well, that plastic piece is meant to fit right against that lip with no fabric. And with the fabric in it, that fabric is between it and loops around that way. What I would recommend is just shave off the thickness of the fabric on that edge around here. Because I had a real hard time getting the screw holes to line up. Because I think that fabric thickness was pushing it away from the screw holes. So before you put that piece in, go ahead and just shave off, like I said, maybe just the thickness of the fabric, maybe a little bit more. But that will help line up the screw holes. Speaking of screws, uh, the screws they tell you to use are these guys right here. I think they're the 115 screws in the bags. This is more of a machine screw or a machine thread. It's not gonna bite into the plastic very well. And plus these aren't long enough. I put one in, and it just, I had it screwed all the way in, but it just wasn't grabbing anything. It wasn't holding anything. So I used these uh, self-tapping sheet metal screws, uh, number two and a quarter. Those have a more aggressive thread. They're gonna bite into the plastic. They're just a tiny bit longer. They're only, they're like two threads longer than the other screws. These are the perfect length. Uh, when they get screwed in tight, you've got maybe half a thread po poking out the top. So these, these worked out perfect. Um, before you start putting anything together though, go ahead and on the bottom side of the car, drill that hole out so that screw can go in nicely. You don't have to worry about the hole here. They'll, they'll tap and screw right into that and they'll hold that down nice and tight. But through the bottom of the car, on the car body, go ahead and drill those holes out so those screws will fit. And uh, I, I, I tell you, these, these will work great. Um, I can't imagine how anybody can get these screws to work, the ones they call for. It just, I don't know. Um, if you can get those to work, um, more power to you, but I just don't think they're a good idea to use those. Okay, now, now that that's all prepped, now you can put the fabric on you tuck it between that piece and then you clamp it in place. I used clamps like this, just kind of flip them up inside and, and, and clamp it down. Uh, you can also use clamps like this. Now these clamps uh, normally have one of these little um, pieces like that on it. I popped those off and on one side I rounded those over, filed them down, um, and the part I modified goes along here. And you have to sand those down or else it'll push the fabric out. So I got two of those and uh, two or three of these. And those were, again, just right along here. Right along here, clamping everything together. So with that clamped in, with everything clamped together, 
You then take, well, you would have, yeah. You then take that and pull it to where you have enough coming out here. That's going to set the back side. It's going to set the distance of the fabric. And since it's clamped, you can pull the fabric out as you need to. And once you know how long this should be, then you can go ahead and wrap it around the front edge of that plastic. It's a plastic part that looks like this, but it doesn't have the holes in it. This is the piece I didn't use. And that plastic part is normally attached to those other rails um, right here. It's normally attached like this. So I actually attached that to all of that first before I did any fitting, and it, it kind of worked out. I actually had a little bit too much around here, and then I came up short to the windshield. I actually had to unglue that and pull it back and push that forward to get some more length forward. So that's kind of, kind of why I'm recommending to fit it off first before you glue that on. Because um, they actually recommended putting it all on here first and clipping all those rails off. Um, just, you know, I, I would be careful doing it that way. I would, I would temporarily mount this into the car with the little screws like here. Go ahead and mount it in there, but don't clip away the rails. Don't clip away these pieces just yet. Um, just to get an idea of how it's going to made up with the top edge of the windshield. All right. Um, and then once you have it clamped in, and you're going to have to tuck the fabric in underneath, and there's a lot of excess fabric, but just tuck it up in there, pull it tight. Another mistake I made was I was too quick to cut to trim it. And um, I thought I had it good. I thought the way I fit it was good, just having it kind of draped over and um, trimmed off the excess. And I actually ended up doing a tiny bit too much, and I had to work around that, which is a pain in the butt. Um, Bottom line, what I'm trying to say is you want this to look just like you want it to look before you put any screws in, just having it clamped. Um, and once you get it stretched forward as far as you need it, the fabric pulled as tight as you want it here, once you get it looking the way you want it to look, now you can go ahead and wrap the fabric around and you can attach either this piece, which just gets screwed on, or you can do what I did here. And uh, what I did, I just cut a piece of aluminum. I use this as a template, um, just a thin, thin piece of aluminum. It's actually thinner than this. And um, that might be about the same thickness. Eh, maybe a tiny bit thinner, maybe a tiny bit thinner than that. But I use this as a template and I left myself about a quarter inch. And then I just bent that edge over um, I used another thicker, heavier piece of aluminum to just kind of roll the edge around, bend the edge around, and then trimmed up the edge, sanded it smooth, polished it up, and I just epoxied that in place. Now keep in mind, when I epoxied that on, it was with that first piece already glued to the fabric. So I had masking tape underneath here, all the way back to about here. I had masking tape all along here because I did not want any epoxy on any of this fabric. Um, and when you, put the, when you put the epoxy on, just make it a, a really thin, a thin, thin layer because you don't want any ooze out at all. You want just enough to make contact, but not enough to ooze out and make a mess. And uh, just clamp it on. Um, I just used a bunch of these little clamps like that to clamp it on, let it set overnight, pull the clamps off, and pretty much done. Now again, right now this isn't perfect. The back edge here is a little bit baggy. I could pull those screws out and pull that fabric tight, but I tell you right now, I've got this fitting pretty much the way I like it. And it seemed like every time I started messing with pulling the fabric, it would screw up somewhere else. This is a balancing act. When you adjust one area, it screws up somewhere else. And one way I screwed up was I first got this dimension right and I put the screws in the back. Then I started messing with the edges, with the sides. And the sides just wouldn't fit until I, told the screws, I had to take the screws out of here, fit the sides. 
And then I got the sides to fit and I put the screws in it, but then I couldn't get the rest. It was, it was a mess. I had those screws in and out probably three or four times until I finally got smart and I just put all the clamps in. I, I, I taped this to the windshield to set that and I just started adjusting that until it looked good. Then I put all the screws back in and it was a mess because I kept doing it wrong, kept doing it wrong. So hopefully, hopefully this advice is helpful. Um, and once you finally get all the screws in, you then put these pieces in right here and, um, and there's a right and wrong way to put these pieces in. They'll go in both ways. I, the instructions, the drawings in the book weren't perfectly clear. So I looked at photos online and I've seen a lot of guys, you know, half of them were done the right way, about half of them were done the wrong way. The long piece here has a flat side and kind of a convex side. And then the short piece has a flat side and a convex side. Flat side gets screwed in here, convex side over the flat side, and then the convex side gets screwed in here. And there's just a screw and a nut here. And uh, notice the curve this way and the curve this way. And again, you can flip that around, actually putting the left one on the right side. Um, I've seen, again, when you look at images online, it looks like about half of them are done the other way. Uh, but I saw a pretty good photo of uh, a box art one, you know, one that Poacher built. And I did it the way they did it. Um, also, the little tabs here. The little tabs there that the fab that the leather loops go through to hold the top back. Those actually weren't too bad to put in. You just leave that screw out, flip them in, and from the back side, you'll see the opening and then put the screw in. So uh, those weren't too bad to put in, actually. That was one of the easiest parts to do of this whole thing. Um, and yeah, as far as this piece goes, this is what Poacher made. This is what Poacher tells you to use. I'm not going to fault anybody for using this. It's fine. Um, I personally just didn't like all those big screws. I mean, to scale, that would be a bolt like that big going into your, your roof. But um, again, if you use this, it's fine. I'm not, going to, I'm not going to fault anybody for using what Poacher sent. And I actually had that on there. I just didn't like it. So I made the metal piece and put that on. Um, anyways, um, I still need to go into the inside. You notice there's a lot of excess fabric here. So I need to take a razor and go through and slice off the extra fabric. So that still needs to be done. I think this will get glued to this piece right here. Um, I don't want to do that just yet. I want to see how it folds back. But you'll notice it's kind of floppy here. You just got to live with that. You can't glue that down. I wish you could, but you can't. If you glue that down, you won't be able to fold it back. Because when this folds back, it's going to pull that up. So you, you just have to live with that being a little bit floppy. And again, those wrinkles will kind of work out. I'm not really concerned about those. Um, but anyways, hopefully this was helpful. I know I've been rambling on a lot. I, I feel bad you didn't really get to see me do any of this actual fitting work, but believe me, it was an hour of a monkey with a football. Um, so just, yeah, um, you should thank me for not making you watch an hour, over an hour of me fumbling around with this. But hopefully just seeing it, hearing what I went through, um, hearing what I think should be done to get this to fit. Uh, hopefully it, it's helpful. And also, while it's clamped, before you put the screws in and you're pulling the fabric where it needs to be, so you can push that out a little bit. Uh, when you're pulling the fabric where it needs to be, again, this right here, come on, let me get this in frame better. This, tape it to the windshield. Tape it to the windshield frame the way you want it. And then put your door panel in with the window rolled up and tape that in. And so you can match that with the door curve. That will be set here. That way when you're pulling all your fabric in, everything still stays lined up. Like I said, get everything perfect the way you want it to look before you start putting the screws in. All right. And speaking of putting the screws in, when you put the screws in, um, to line up the holes, use a tool 
a, um, I can't even find mine right now. Use a poker tool like a scribe or something. This isn't a scribe, but use a scribe, there it is, to poke the hole through the fabric and line up the holes before you put the screw in. You gotta poke a hole through the fabric. If you just try and screw the screw through the fabric, it's gonna grab the fabric and start twisting it. And it's gonna make a big mess and you'll see it. You'll see it, trust me. Poke a hole through the fabric before you put the screws in. All right, so again, hopefully this was helpful. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, I still need to put this on. So let me get set up. Let me get the parts ready to uh, start putting this and the lights on. And once that's done, the next video, we're going to start prepping the body. So uh, give me a second to get ready and we'll put those tail lights on. All right, so I went ahead and glued the um, metal pieces onto the lenses. I don't know if the camera's going to pick that up, but that one has been kind of painted with a translucent red. That one with the translucent yellow. Looks like on the camera they're both the same color, but they're not. Um, so the metal piece gets glued onto the clear piece, and then I went ahead and glued it to the back here. You technically don't have to do that, because once it goes onto the car body, you use heat to press that down. Um, and I'm going to go ahead, and I didn't notice that till now. There's a little bit of like an injection pin mark here. That might hold it off the body a little bit. That was a little bit higher than the other one. But uh, go ahead and shave those down a bit. All right. And um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to uh, do this on camera. Um, I'll try because it's a little bit uh, awkward holding everything because i got to hold the car. And if I can't get it in the camera very well, basically you put that into the hole in the back of the body and you use a soldering iron to melt and squeeze that pin down. But, and I've showed this before on some other parts, but if you take a piece of scrap aluminum foil, put it over it and do it that way, the plastic won't stick to your soldering iron. It'll just make a smoother, nicer looking melted spot and it will keep your soldering iron clean. So, uh, let's see again how easily I can do this and try to keep things on camera. So uh, we'll just stick that one in the hole here. Now you notice that um, the car body is curved and that's straight. So I'll do one and I'll push that around, push it into the hole, and then I'll do the other one. And just checking to make sure that um, that one will go into the hole once the other one's in. Yeah, it'll, it'll work. All right, so best way to hold this, maybe we just put it down like this. And put the foil. And the iron, just be careful not to touch anything important. And you don't want to smash it down too flat, just enough, just enough so it'll hold. If you smash it down too flat, it might be too weak. And that's a borderline too flat. I just told you not to do it too flat. And I just really, I just really smushed it. Um, I didn't think I was doing it that much, man. That sucks. Um, but it should still hold. It should be fine. So now we'll get the other one in. Get the other one in here. Hopefully the other one doesn't pop out because I smushed it way too flat. And you know why? Because that doesn't stick out near as much as I thought it would. I thought it was sticking out a lot further than it was. There's like almost nothing sticking out of this one. Huh. Why doesn't that surprise me? Look at that. I push it down all the way. There's like, there it goes. But it just broke. Huh. All right, well, screw that. Um, that one's going to get super glued. 
Okay, so let me turn the iron off. And what I might do is just pop the other, since that one broke that easy, I'm just gonna pop the other one off and I'm just gonna super glue it. Um, I mean, what else can you do, right? Uh, let's see. So I've got that to do. <laughs> I'll do that off camera. That's just gluing a part on. You don't need to watch glue dry. Um, one of the other things that I started working on was trimming the excess fabric from the inside. If you take a look on the inside, um, where you pull the fabric through, there's a lot of excess fabric that needs to be trimmed. The way I'm doing that is, uh, you know, you can't really get an exacto blade in there very easily. So I took a new blade. Where did I put this thing? I took a new exacto blade and I broke it in half and I clamped it down into some vice grips. That gives me like a 90 degree blade so I can reach in there and just start slicing at the fabric and um, and you know it just kind of slices off that excess fabric that's inside of there and once that's done then this piece that extra piece that got glued in here that and I'll, I'll trim up all those extra threads that just kind of gets glued down just like that that'll get glued down along here just kind of clean everything up neaten everything up make everything look nice um, and then that's pretty much it for the body. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and end the, I'm going to end this video here. The next video, I'm going to have the chassis setting here. There is just a couple of things we need to wrap up on the chassis and then we can put the body on the chassis and then we're getting pretty close. Um, so, um, oh, one other thing I wanted to mention, the screws that go in here. And of course there's a nut on the back side. When you tighten that screw and nut down, you don't want it overly tight because uh, you could distort that fitting here. Um, so just snug. Just make that screw and nut snug. And then, let me move this body out of the way so I don't screw it up. Uh, once that's snug, since you don't want it overly tight and you don't want it coming loose again, because again, those are not by any means a self-locking nut. Um, you don't want that to come loose again. So when you put that nut on, you want to put just the tiniest drop of this on there. This is a uh, penetrating thread lock. Um, what this does is capillary action takes it into the threads. And then let that dry, soak up any excess. And then what I did after that was I took some CA and I put it just on the top of the uh, screw. And the main reason for that was just in case that Loctite didn't fully dry or cure before I started putting things together, uh, that Loctite's actually green in color. I didn't want it to make green marks on the fabric. So the, um, the CA on the back of that just kind of traps all that in. Plus, uh, I didn't want the threads of the screw snagging or dragging on the, um, on the fabric. So that just kind of made a nice smooth spot for it to possibly rub on the fabric. Um, again, I'm, I'm paranoid about anything happening to the fabric. Stains, tearing, snagging, whatever. Um, so anyways, I, I guess that's it for this one. Um, oh, one other thing, I almost forgot. The post that holds the tire on, or the spare tires on, that's gotta go in before you put it on the chassis. That's a piece of threaded rod and a nut. Uh, I went ahead and test fitted this a few days ago. Uh, I just screwed the nut on uh, right about there, actually. And I put it in. And then there's another nut that goes on. And we can see that here. So there's a nut on the inside, another nut, the threaded rod, and then the piece that holds the tire on. So I test fitted that with these spare tires to verify that that is where you want the nut. And I Loctited that in place. So now what we need to do is fit this in. Let me uh, move this thing out of the way here real quick. So now what we need to do, um, now that that nut is Loctited on, we need to flip the car over, drop that in from this side, and hope it comes out the hole like it did. So now that's sticking out of the hole. Then we take the other nut, while not letting that fall through, and screw that on. 
Hold on. Well, I swear. There we go. Screw that on. And we'll snug that up with, um, yeah, I have a little wrench on me, with me here, but you get the idea. So we'll snug that nut up and I'll put a little drop of that penetrating Loctite in it just to make sure it stays on. And so now that's ready for the spare tires to go on. After the spare tires are on, then that piece goes on and then that handle just threads on and holds all that together. So that part's ready to go. Um, and uh, again, uh, one other thing. I know I keep saying one more thing, one more thing. But the screws that go in right there that hold all that framework together, there's a nut on the back side of that. Also put a tiny drop of that penetrating Loctite on that side as well, just so that doesn't back out. Um, or CA, CA would also hold it. Just take every precaution to not get Loctite or CA on the body or the fabric or anywhere you don't want it. Just be super careful. Um, so anyways, like I said, I've just got a few little minor things I can touch up off camera, like gluing that on, trimming the fabric, gluing that flap in there, and that's it. So anyways, um, I want to end it now because I'm rambling. I'm repeating myself like I'm good at doing. Um, next week, we'll see the chassis here, which uh, it's getting kind of exciting. It's kind of a major milestone. So anyways, sorry for the long video, but it's shorter than the last one, I hope. Um, sorry, as always. Until next time, thanks for watching.